Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out my YouTube channel today, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, and today we're joined again by Dr. Owen Reese. Dr. Reese, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be able to talk about this new project. So we come to a very interesting and heavily talked about and discussed term, and that is Malone Lobby. Why is it so heatedly discussed? Why is it so controversial? Would you really just walk us through one of the most blown up and epic phrases in history? Yeah, the phrase Molon Labe is, um, first things first, it is a Greek term. It is an ancient Greek phrase. Um, it comes from Plutarch. Um, he specifically records it in his uh, collection of sayings of the Spartans. Um, he says this as uh, Leonidas, the great Spartan, great, let's use that term loosely, the Spartan king at Thermopylae. Yeah. So of course, this is why it's so important. This is why it sort of captured the imagination. Uh, you've got Leonidas with his band of 301 Spartans, because uh, of course Leonidas has 300 others with him. Um, he also has more with him so there's probably about 700 spartans in total if you include helots and perioikoi etc um and of course all the other greeks as well you know about six maybe seven thousand um at the battle at the battle um and they're facing off against uh, of course the persian army uh, of xerxes just as an aside there are not a million persians i'll leave that there um, so it's this idea of defiance. So the phrase Molon Labe literally translates as having come, take. So come and get them is what he's saying. What's he saying this to? Xerxes has given the demand, lay down your weapons. Leonidas, cool man, big beard, very aggressively in the face of just monumental adversity, says come and get them. I mean, this is very much come pry it from a cold, dead hands kind of. This is, you know, that kind of iconic phrase. And it comes in Plutarch. Problem with that, Plutarch's writing about 500 years later. And you think, okay, fine. But, you know, it's, it's a cool phrase. You know, it's, uh, it, it could, it could, he could have said it. He could have said it. And then you kind of look at the story itself. So you look at Plutarch himself and you look at what earlier versions of the battle say. Plutarch himself. First of all, Plutarch doesn't say that Leonidas says these words. Plutarch says that they're, they're exchanging letters. So Xerxes has written a note handed over by a messenger that says, hand over your weapons. And Leonidas writes a note back. Come and get them. Less dynamic, less exciting. This isn't Gerard Butler shouting it over a shield wall. You know, it doesn't have that kind of dynamism um, going on. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, as a classical Greek historian, the writing of letters is kind of jarring. We don't see this in classical Greek warfare. We see it later, you know, with the idea of envoys coming with letters. But classical Greek warfare, it seems to be verbal. Um, predominantly so you send an envoy he speaks he's spoken to he comes back you know um not really letters letter exchanges isn't really discussed in in the source material okay so the idea that he's writing a letter is odd um and you kind of go okay well let's go earlier does anyone else say that xerxes and leonidas speak in some way well diodorus of sicily also writes about the battle and he also says that there's an exchange, a conversation of some sort. Um, it doesn't contain the phrase Molon Labe, um, and it is awfully longer than this witty two, you know, two word phrase. You know, so Xerxes kind of orders them to give up their arms, to depart unharmed, go home um, and become allies of the Persians. Um, and all the Greeks who do this will be given better land than they now possess. That's what Xerxes offers them. Leonidas, here's the command from the envoy, verbally. Uh, he replies something along the lines of, if we should be allies of the king, uh, we would be more useful if we kept our weapons, wouldn't we? You know, so why should we be giving them up? Um, and if we're going to wage war with you, we also need our weapons. 
uh, to fight for freedom. You know, and we want our freedom. And as for the land that you're promising us, uh, you know, this is kind of Greek ideology. Greeks have learned from their fathers to gain lands, not by cowardice, but by valor. You know, it's not as pithy as a response. <laughs> um, taps into the same ideology, you know, the valor of courage of, you know, basically a, um, an F you to a Persian demand. Um, but it doesn't have that kind of stereotypical laconic wit. So, okay, so we've got another one that suggests they talk, but doesn't have Molon Labi in it. Okay, let's look at our earliest source, Herodotus. Herodotus must have something that gives it. If, if Herodotus have anything about the two discussing this in any way, it offers at least a, a shred of validity to this idea. Herodotus does not have Xerxes or Leonidas speak to each other once. At all. Ever. Xerxes speaks to a lot of Greek people, but he never speaks to Xerxes. So our oldest source for this battle, not only is this phrase not said, not only is this exchange of letters not there, not only is the conversation not there, no conversation is there. So predominantly, we have to accept this did not happen. Molalabe did not happen. Okay. So the next question is, why is it so prevalent? Why is it so popular? Well, the reason why it's so popular is because of what it encapsulates. It encapsulates our, and by our, I mean sort of Western Europe and uh, the US, um, our cultural tradition of us versus the world, especially the East, which is ironic because uh, Herodotus doesn't position the Persians as East. He positions them as South, oddly enough, um, because of uh, ancient Greek notions of geography um but that's by the by so we've got um you know this idea of it's us against them it's about oppression it's about this evil giant force coming to take what is rightfully ours all right so they've used this um to discuss things like you know comparative events to thermopylae the alamo for instance often is uh, compared to this in many ways um, you know, there, there, are, there are lots of these um, and it's grown and it's evolved and it's become, it's not just necessarily the East, uh, whether that be, um, you know, uh, the communists in Russia, whether it now be China, whether it be um, Islamic terrorists you know, and all these kind of ideological constraints. What we're seeing, especially in the US, is this adoption for many years by gun activism. Now, of course, this doesn't just tie into the oppression, which in this instance would be the state, the state taking our right, yeah, which is there as well. But it also taps into the literal translation of Molon Labe. Come and take them. You want our guns, come and get them. So basically, as is always the case, shall we say traditional values or conservative values with a little c? I'm very aware that I'm British and you're American. So conservative means something different here and democratic means something different to you. <laughs> so, you know, conservative values, traditional values as such, um, you could well uh, believe strongly in the right to bear arms, but that doesn't mean you're extreme in your views. That doesn't mean you're an extreme right-wing fanatic. However, what we have to accept is that they are being adopted by extremer voices. So Molon Labe then gets merged with Sparta in general. This is a Spartan ethos. This is Spartan warriorship. I'm a Spartan warrior. Here's my tattoo of the Lambda shield and Molon Labe written under it. They're everywhere. Um, you know, I'm just like them and we should all be like, and everyone goes, yeah, that's great. This is brilliant. We're not going to give up our guns. I'm like, yeah. And you know what else the Spartans did? Yeah. The Spartans believe themselves to be ethnically purer than everyone else. Yeah. Just like us. What? And what we have here is a very simple strategic drift. So from someone who just wants to keep their right to bear arms, I'm not judging that. I don't come from a country that agrees with that, but, you know, I'm not judging that in any way. And what we have there is a strategic drift to you join a group who agrees with that. That group then talks about other things associated with what you agreed with. And you go, yeah, that makes sense. 
And then they move on. And you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense with what you just said. That makes sense. And then by the end of it, you've got a conversion to very extreme ideas that are encapsulated by Molo and Labe, which is where you started. This is the danger of the appropriation of the ancient world. This is the danger of expressing phrases like Molo and Labe without understanding context. And the context, the original context of Molon Labe, it was written at least 500 years after the fact by a Greco-Roman writer who is idealizing Spartan culture. For lots of different reasons. So he's giving us an ideal and he's fundamentally invented or is giving us a tradition which has invented this idea. Transplant that 2,000 years later Joe blogs, see something very simple. I believe in freedom. I believe in liberty. I believe in strong values. I haven't got a problem with that at all. Associate that with Molan Labe. What else has got Molan Labe on it? Now we're entering an extremist field. Okay. So this is why Bad Ancient, uh, we purposely tried to tackle this early because it needs to be there just to set the historical record straight. Nothing else. Your political ideas, I do not care about. Your uh, motivations for why you're interested in it, I don't care about. You know, that's your business. Um, the history, do not misuse the history. And to my subscribers, definitely check out the links in the video description below. They're not only going to take you to Ancient World Magazine, but they're also going to take you to Bad Ancient and really give them your full support. They have a Patreon account, so on and so forth, and really take advantage of what they have to offer, which is the correct interpretation of history, be better informed, and honestly, study what you love. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much, and have a wonderful night. Mm -hmm.